good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Geneva City Council Chamber for tonight's City Council meeting and Committee of the Whole meeting. It's my pleasure to call this meeting to order, and I kindly ask that our City Clerk please take the roll call. Bruno. Here. Burkhardt. Here. Ruby. Ruby here. Kilberg. Here. Caven. Here. Kasarag. Here. Malaja. Here. Marks is out. Mayor. Here. Swanson. Here. Ladies and gentlemen, we begin our city council meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, I'd like to ask three distinguished guests of ours. Goy. Blaque. And Mr. Campos, where are you? Any nicknames for you, Ken? Can't put, I want all three of you to lead us in the pledge if you'd be so kind. Thank you. I want to lead to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I hear, I hear cooing. What's going on back there? That's awesome. This is, a, this is our new police recruit. Ladies and gentlemen, item 3A on the agenda is to proclaim Women's History Month in the Geneva, excuse me, in the city of Geneva for March of 2022. Is there a motion? All, Council Member Burghardt makes the motion. Council Member Mayer makes the second. All in favor, a voice vote is sufficient. Please say aye. 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 Fantastic. Aye. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to just to slightly amend the agenda without objection. I would like to jump to, out of courtesy to our guest, item D first, item 3D, consider mayor's appointment of Matthew Hyduk to the Ethics Commission. Is there a motion? Mr. Maladra makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Bruno. Mr. Hyduk, welcome, sir. You want to come on up? Sure. Thank you again for your application. Thank you again for your interest. Thank you. We're delighted you're here. The council members have a copy, of course, of your credentials. And I'm certain that uh, if there are any questions for Mr. Hyduk, I'd be happy to defer to whomever. Mr. Kil <laughs> Mr. Kilber is looking at you with some... <laughs> Went to school with his son. His yes, I, his I know. He's a good friend of mine. All floor is yours, Mr. Kilberg, if you want to. <laughs> I prefer not to share anything that I have on Mr. Hyde. <laughs> I will say, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, I understand you know Mr. Radovich. Mr. Radovich, yes. Uh, Yes. yes. Yeah. Going way back. Go way back. Yeah. I understand you used to hang out with his daughter. Uh, yes, that's true. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, those were good days. Those were good, good days. Anyone else from the days? Thanks for being here. What uh, interests you in serving on the Ethics Commission? Um, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's my background, which is law and philosophy, I think is a good fit. Um, I've lived here for a long time and Never really been involved in the city, so it seemed like a good opportunity. Great. Well, thanks for putting up your hand and volunteering. No so, problem. Very good. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Anyone else? And I will note, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, upon confirmation of Mr. Hyduke, uh, we will be inviting the commission to have a meeting uh, for the important, I think, aspect of just convening the group now that it's a uh, full complement and going through the rules, regulations, processes, all that good stuff. So. And of course, those meetings are open meetings as well. So we have a motion, ladies and gentlemen. We have a second. Uh, voice vote would be sufficient. All those in favor of appointing Matthew Hyduke to the City of Geneva's Ethics Commission, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you all. I promised Matt I'd rearrange the agenda because <laughs> of all this. And I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Thank you. Go, go say hi to the kids. Thank you. OK. Now, folks, 
we go back to item 3B as in boy, and that's the administration of the oath for police officers, Amigdio Garcia and Blake Stewart. We're going to begin with Goy. Goy, come on up, big guy. Now, all of you on the dais are probably thinking, why are you calling this guy Goy? Because when he was a little baby, his aunt called him Goitito, right? That's right. And then she shortened it to Goy, and it stuck. That's right. Will your name badge say Goy? Hope not. No? <laughs> you hope not. You've got family here? Yes, sir. Would you like to introduce the family? Sure. I have my sister, Graciela, and her family. Yeah. Um, next, my brother, Nestor, and his family. My brother Ricardo and his family, and my brother Hector. Fantastic. Welcome. Now, of course, we've got some distinguished police officers. Your teammates are with you. It's my understanding, sir, that uh, you like to work out. Yes, sir. And apparently you like to work out in something they call CrossFit. Is that right? Yes, sir. I'm a coach. I understand you also taught my brother, my older brother. You were his instructor. Yes, sir. You know, he's, um, he's no longer with us because of you. Yeah. Understand. And you were out visiting him recently in Colorado. Yes, sir. Yeah. What do you think of him? <laughs> I like him, sir. Good, Good guy. Good to you. Yeah. His son just had a birthday a couple days ago. Aiden. Oh, okay. Yeah, March 4th. Check this out, man. Now, it says here you like to be called Amigdio. Yes, sir. So, no more goy stuff? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. You have a five-year-old dog. I do. What's your dog's name? Louie. Louie. And that's based on what? Uh, just Louie. Just Louie. What kind of dog? Uh, Basset Hound Mix. Basset Hound Mix. Wow. And pronounce your, your mother's name? Gras... Graciela. Graciela. Graciela Perez. Fantastic. Brothers or sisters, older sister Graciela, we just met, of course. Brothers Nestor Garcia, Ricardo Garcia, and Hector Garcia. Where were you born and raised? It says here, I was born and raised in the city of West Chicago. Are you a West Chicago graduate, too? Yes, sir. Are you? That's a pretty cool school. Yes. Do you know the mayor of West Chicago? I do not. <laughs> you sure? Yes, His mother-in-law lives in Geneva. Do you know that? I do not. Are you nervous? A little bit. <laughs> Associate degree in science from the College of DuPage. That's a good school. It is. It's a big school. I believe it's still the biggest community college in the United States, is it not? Yeah, it's one of the top ranked. Yeah, I'm un unbelievable, man. Now, according to this, it says your hobbies include, my main hobbies are weight training, <laughs> Hands-on hands -on projects and DIY? Yes, sir. Such as what? Uh, I built my deck, uh, I epoxy oh. my garage floor, things like that. Really? So when you build your deck, you got a permit? Yes, sir. Did you? <laughs> yes, sir. And the inspection went well? It did, sir. I can verify this. Yes, sir. <laughs> you like reading as well. What's your favorite genre? Uh, Nonfiction. Nonfiction. Are you reading something now? Uh, yes. Survival of the Sickest. Survival of the s sickest. What's that about? Uh, a theory going into why diseases are good and why they developed. In really? Yes, sir. Going back in time, obviously. Yes. No kidding. It says here, and any new exercise you like doing it based on studies of books. So you read about fitness, and then you practice that fitness. Yes, sir. Anything new other than CrossFit that you're trying these days? A uh, little less running, more strength training, because it's cold right? out, so, yeah. Well, it's good, because there's really no running in the police force. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's your 40 speed? Not sure, sir. What's your 40 speed, Kenders? Couldn't like tell four? you, sir. 
What is it? Four. Four. Is it, is it really? <laughs> Four minutes? No. Okay. <laughs> now, Kenders works out with you, correct? Yes, sir. Is he as big a stud as we think he is in the gym as Absolutely. he is here? Yes, sir. You think so? Yes, sir. These are your words. Previously, I was a heating and air conditioning consultant as well as a CrossFit coach. We talked about that. HVAC, that's a fascinating business. Yes, sir. Did you enjoy it? I did. I mean, it's a booming business. Consistent, yes, sir. Good Lord. Miscellaneous information. Ready? This is pretty cool. I probably served in the United States Marine Corps, 2014 to 2020, sergeant rank. Yes, Thank sir. you for your service. My pleasure, sir. And you saw, <clears throat> were you deployed? Negative. Negative. Oh, that's cool, man. <laughs> Where were you stationed? Uh, Fort Sheridan and then in Austin, Texas for a year. No kidding. And what inspired you to join the Marines? Uh, had some family do it. Is and that it? just always knew I was going to be part of the military. And the Marine Corps had the most physical challenge, so I took that. So this whole physical challenge thing is really important to you. It is, sir, yes. Good Lord. You know, the uh, council has a uh, CrossFit team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Led by you, sir? <laughs> How long is the probationary period, Chief? <laughs> Give him one. I'm kind of a Planet Fitness guy myself. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> oh, that's so cool, man. Commander Noonan's your buddy. He is. You're part of the American Legion here in Geneva since 2019. Yes, sir. And the Legion's looking beautiful. Yes, sir. I was with Commander Noonan the other day. I had a nice tour of the facilities. It's looking great. Downstairs is really looking nice. Yes, the bar's coming along. Yeah, the bar is coming along. And I see that we have, a, we have yet to receive, as I understand it, the Geneva Firefighter patch, but we have received the Geneva Police Department patch, courtesy of Kenders. Yes, sir. Isn't that cool? The Legion's a good place. How important is that for you? Very important, sir. You get to commiserate with your, your colleagues who served? Yes, sir. What's it mean to you personally? I think just continuing that journey and yeah. being part of that camaraderie. The journey never ends, does it? Never. Do you always want to be a cop? I always wanted to help people, yes. Yeah. What, what inside you makes you that way, do you think? I think just the core of who I am, and there's a feeling you get when you can help people, and especially to do it in a way that other people maybe not want to, but they can't. Well, we're, we're excited as all heck to have you join our team. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there any questions or comments you'd like to make to the council or everybody tuning in? Uh, thank you for the opportunity, and uh, I'm excited to start the training. That's awesome. Anything else you want to share with us before we uh, <clears throat> administer the oath? No, sir. Do you want to have anyone join you while you take the oath? The floor is yours. Um, so if you'd like to have your family join you, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, my siblings could, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Please do. And our city clerk is going to administer the oath. You guys want to stand up? And we're going to get out of the way so the photos are appropriate. You can step right up here. Oh. <laughs> Put that up there. Yes, I know. It looks like a bunch of hippies. Can you find out? Uh, officer, uh, officer, do you mind if I take a couple pictures of you too?
congratulations, wherever he was. Where did he go? Oh, there you are. Congratulations, man. Well done. So what's next for you? Where, do you, where are you off to? The academy? When do you ship out? Oh, cool. That's awesome, man. So between now and then, just going to work out? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. Okay, Blake, your turn, big guy. Blake, you know your mom and dad were here at about 4.30? Yeah. They were literally the first ones in the building, man. Yeah, I bet. Unbelievable. <laughs> now, I, I teased you earlier about Blake because your sister said to say that. Now, what's that all about? I just got a lot of nicknames uh, from all sorts of places, especially my place of work. They call me Blakely. And, and what is your place of work? Uh, up in Waukegan at Caliber Tactical Gun Range. Up in Waukegan? Yeah. Good Lord. That's a hike, man. Where do you make your home? Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> Highland Park uh, currently. Oh, so. so you're living in your parents' home until it sells? Yes, I am. Ah. See, Mom and Dad moved back to Wichita, where they originally are from. Yes. They came here for 32 years, and now you're living rent-free in their house? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's a heck of a gig, man. Yeah. Is this the reason why the house hasn't sold yet? <laughs> uh, it could be. It could be. <laughs> what are some of the other nicknames that we should know about? Well, Block A seems to be number one. Block A? Block A. Block A, yes. Yeah, seems to be number one. Then Blakely. Otherwise, uh, don't know any other ones. <laughs> that you know of. Yeah, that I know of. <laughs> Again, had the pleasure of meeting your mom and dad. Reed, of course, is with us. Cameron's still at school. Yeah. And Cameron goes to, I believe, Kansas? Yes. No, yeah, Kansas. And she's a senior this year. Should be, yeah. Should. I hope so. So you're close to your family, are you, Blake? <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen her. Yeah. Now, are you the oldest? No, I'm the middle. You're the middle. Unfortunately. Yeah, middle children, that's a, that's a challenge. Yeah. Is that really true, is. Mom? No. No. <laughs> Dad? No. <laughs> Beautiful Highland Park, Illinois is where you were born. Where did you go to high school? Highland Park. Highland Park High. Yeah. There you go. College of Lake County and Northeastern Illinois University. Yes. Did you go to the Chicago campuses or the one further east, or did you go to the one like on the northeast side? Uh, El Centro campus okay. uh, off of 294 yeah. and uh, the main campus, which is in uh, around like the Cicero area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a neat campus. Yeah. Now, your hobbies include making fun of people who do CrossFit, <laughs> which is interesting. Golf? Yes. What's your handicap? Uh, whatever my dad gives me that day. Are you a golfer, Dad? Yes. What's your handicap? I'm a bogey golfer. A bogey golfer. Yeah. Video games, mm -hmm. such as Pong? Yeah, I've tried it. Yeah. Play with my parents if they uh, want to play time. You tried Pong with your parents? I wish I did. They don't want to play because they probably know I'd kick their ass. Check, check. <laughs> We'll have, to, we'll, we'll have to make sure we edit that out. I'm kidding you, Blake. Don't worry about it. You should hear the city attorney. <laughs> Drones. Are you an authorized drone pilot? I am. And what does a drone pilot's license cost these days? Uh, well, drone pilot ground school will help you get through because it's a lot of legalese that you have to pick up with the FAA and Department right. of Transportation. So if you enroll, it's uh, like around $250. And then to do the test, it's 40 bucks on top of that. Is that forever or is it an annual renewal? It's a renewal every two years. Okay. So you have to take a short exam. Uh, it doesn't cost much. It's like $30. Okay. And you could do that online. Now, do you also use that as, as like a, a, a side business, if you will? I could. Uh, I would like to do it with, a, uh, with uh, Geneva Police Department. I specialize in uh, drone policy, so oh, you do? I could even start up a drone, uh, a drone for Geneva Police Department if they would want to. So, well, let's ask. Where's the? You're more than willing to do so. <laughs> if they uh, can get a nice drone like Highland Park can, I I would love to fly that. And those suckers are expensive. Yes, uh, the mo model that 
is common within law enforcement is the matrice, which is around like twenty one thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, we have a couple of matrices. <laughs> we have a, in the garage. In the garage, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a couple of Chevys. Now there's some high school students in town who have their own drones, and they do all sorts of cool stuff for their high school classes, what have you. I trust you're pretty adept at all that. Yes. Do you do it mostly for enjoyment and capture the photos and images and share them with people you know and all that stuff? Mostly just do it for enjoyment. I typically stick to the policy side so that way I know all the rules, laws, regulations, and policies. Are you consulted? Are you, are you consulted with by others who want to know about those policies? I don't do any consulting work. Uh, just do my own research. Well, that's pretty cool. A range safety officer at Caliber Tactical Gun Range. So are you downrange or are you uprange? <laughs> well, I sometimes have to be downrange, but I make sure that uh, the range is clear first. I bet. No accidents since. No accidents under your belt? Nope. That's awesome. Yep. I'm ready to start on the challenging yet rewarding profession of being a police officer. These are your words. Yes. Why, why, why do you want to be a police officer? Why do you, or have you always wanted to be a police officer? Well, I always wanted to be within a community and be a community leader. And being able to be in a tight-knit community such as Geneva would be an honor. And I would absolutely love to work for Geneva. And uh, being able to connect with community members, because I'm a people person, I love talking. So it'd be great to be working around here. Do you know who's with us tonight? And I should have I should have also shared with you, officer. You know who's with us tonight in the room? One of the commissioners who brought you on board. He wants to see it through. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. That's really cool. How was that testing? Pretty tough? It was the challenge to get to where I am today. I can imagine. Yeah. What else should we know about you? What I'm, else do you want to share? I apply myself. I'm very committed to what I do. And uh, I can't wait to push myself 100%, especially going through Academy. So I'm looking forward to the future that's in front of me. That's exciting. And you ship out the 28th as well? Exactly, yes. You do. So are you guys going to be roomies? It'd be great. <laughs> the dude has a drone, man. I wouldn't. Yeah. It's like. I'll bring my video games. Do you work out? I do. Do you? Are you, uh, do you, are you intense? I use weighted vests when I work out. So I, I think. Oh, you do? Yes. No kidding. Wow. Are you doing the polar plunge this year? No, but I could probably do that. That'd be fun. Hundred bucks, man. You can get a free sweatshirt. I like sweatshirts. <laughs> Would you like to have anyone join you while you are administer the oath of office? Yes. The floor is yours, okay? Officer, do you mind if I take a couple pictures? For sure. Congratulations. Blake, you've got to sign a couple documents, and before you leave tonight, we're going to go live to your home in Highland Park <laughs> via drone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next 
celebrity is firefighter Kenneth Campos. Mr. Campos, come on up. Thanks for visiting with me prior to the meeting, too. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Now, you got some guests with you tonight? Yes. Would you like to introduce your fan club? I have my girlfriend, Tawny Spenceley, uh, my mom, Maria Campos, my little brother, Stephen Campos, uh, my dad, Gallo Campos, and then I have friends in back, Araceli, Emily, and Ashley. Oh, you got a good group. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Now, you're the only guy who actually put down your date of birth, man. And I'm not going to read it because it's depressing. <laughs> yeah. It's like July 20th. Yes, sir. That's good living. Uh, does that make you Leo or Virgo or what is it? Cancer. Cancer. Yep. And what's so special about that sign? Uh. Oh, you're sensitive. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. Way to go. <laughs> that was on the record. Oh yeah, that's 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 forever record. Born in Chicago. Raised in Des Plaines. You and I were talking about this earlier. Yes, sir. You went to Streamwood High School. College of DuPage to attend the Fire Academy. And they have a top-notch academy there. They do, yeah. They really, they, they have a heck of a, a um, Homeland Security Institute, too. Yeah, good program. It's, it's a really good program. Do you know these guys? I do not, know. No? Are you allowed to fraternize with police officers? Yes. Are you? Yeah. Now, this is pretty cool, man. You graduated from Del Nor Community Hospital, not community, excuse me, Northwestern Medicine's Del Nor's paramedic program in 2021. Yes. That's intense stuff. It was a long year. <laughs> it is a long year. You, you pretty much, I mean, you were in the heart of it all during the, the height of COVID. Yeah. How did you deal with all that? From a personal Just level. Day by day. Day by day. Yep. It says here you chose to become a firefighter to serve and give back to the community. Yes. That's always something in your soul? Yes, sir. Did you know as a kid you wanted to do this? I wanted to do something to help people out. Yeah. I just wasn't until high school that I kind of figured out that fire service was the best avenue to do that. Do, do you remember that? moment in high school you thought man this is it yes i do do you really yep may i ask what was that junior year sophomore it was year? yeah it was junior year yep. um one day i was just kind of like hey you know fire service sounds interesting and i had a buddy of mine that was a fire explorer in streamwood oh sure yep. and i asked him if i could go check it out and he said sure come along and first day ever since then i fell in love with it uh the guys at Streamwood, they had us do trainings with them, like right off the bat, and right. it was a lot of fun, and I knew it's what I wanted to do. That's really cool. For the last, uh, and I'll ask Chief Antonori this, but for the last couple decades, we do a lot of our um, controlled burns in St. Charles, <laughs> just for fun. It's like, <laughs> have you heard of that? Uh, yes. <laughs> You've been with us since 2017. Yes, sir. As a paid on call. So you, you've risen through the ranks, as it were. Yes. And I trust you're excited to be full time with us. Very excited, yes. That's awesome, isn't it? Now, do you drive the trucks too? Sometimes. Do you? You ever heard about uh, our friend Gavin who used to drive trucks? Yes, I have. Yeah. Any dents there that you saw Gavin maybe hit something? Or? Uh, maybe a couple. Maybe a couple? <laughs> and don't fix those dents, right? That's a nice memorial to Gavin, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Hobbies include hiking, anywhere and everywhere? Uh, yeah, most fun place I've been to, Colorado, yeah. out of the Appalachians, a couple oh, times. No kidding. Um, it's been a, with COVID and school and everything, I haven't really done anything in the past couple of years, but before that I used to go out at least a couple times a year. Do you, do you hike by yourself or do you go with somebody for safety purposes? Or But you know what the heck you're doing too, right? Sometimes I go by myself, sometimes yeah. I go with somebody. Yeah. It just depends if I'm feeling frisky or not. Feeling fr <laughs> You gonna write that down? I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and you enjoy camping? Yes. 
Now that's something that, does anyone else on the council enjoy camping? Really? What, what, what is it about camping that's so, I don't know, camping? It's like peace and quiet, getting away from city life. Yeah. Do you pitch your own tent and all that nonsense and campfires yes. and yeah. girlfriends? Yeah. Do you, do you have a guitar? I do not. So do you got... Do, you should get him a guitar. <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, you like going on road trips. I like to drive everywhere. I you like to drive take, everywhere. I don't like to take a plane. But you will not take a plane. I try not to. Why is that? It's just more freedom in the yeah. car. You get to see everything too, don't you? Yeah. Do you take the main roads or you go in the back roads? Mix it up. A little bit of both. Where's the latest place you travel to? Last place I went to was Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. That was maybe two years ago. Oh, really? Summer, Pretty cool? Yeah. It was fun, yeah. What's your next trip? Um, maybe Bryce Canyon or Zion National Park. Not sure nice. yet. You ever been to the landfill? I have. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, that's a full day. Yeah. Well, we drove up there, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah. It's a good view, though. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. What else should we know about you, sir? Do you prefer Ken or Kenneth? Either one. Either one? Kenny, what? Ken. Kenny, there you go. So, Kenny, what else would you know about? What else do you want to share? Um, I think I'm excited to work for the city full time. I appreciate you taking the time to do all this for me. And When's your first shift? Uh, my full, first full shift is Saturday. Coming and Saturday. I, it's supposed to be chilly, too, man. I like the cold. Do you like the good. cold? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a camper, for God's sake. So, what's like, <laughs> man. What shit? Are you gold? Black. Black? And what station are you going to be at on Saturday? Uh, to be decided. Find out Wednesday. Who decides this? They're all pointing at each other. Oh, Chief. Oh, yeah? Benz makes the decision? So if we want to come visit you on your first full day, we'll have to check in with Benz? Yes. That's cool. Bring <laughs> Anything else? No, sir. Who do you want to have join you while uh, you? Uh, my girlfriend and family. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. The firefighter campus, do you mind if I take a couple pictures? Couple documents to sign as well, Steph. Yep. Yep. And then the room clears out. <laughs> it's like, congratulations, Mr. Campos. We're proud to have you, man. Thank you. And now we'd like to invite Chief Antonori up for an update regarding Ken Campos. No. Firefighters, police officers, special guests, by all means, feel free to leave. So thank you again for gracing us with your presence, and thank you for your service.
<clears throat> it was something you said. Clearly. Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> You're all free to leave. Ladies and gentlemen, item four to the agenda are to consider any amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening? Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this council, can be considered and voted upon with one motion. Is there such a motion? So moved. Ooh, that's a tough one. Mayor Swanson, any questions or comments regarding the omnibus agenda? Mr. Clerk, whenever you're ready, sir, please take the roll. Ruby. Ruby, aye. Caven. Aye. Hilberg. Aye. Kasrog. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. The omnibus agenda has been approved with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Mm. Item 10, municipal bills for payment. We kindly ask our city clerk to read the bills in their aggregate for our consideration. Total bills are $3,041,523.20. Mayor, I move that we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount could be found in tonight's city council packet on the city website. Alderman Bruno has made the motion to pay the bills as presented, which are also available in our packets and on the city's website. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderman Kosserbog. Any questions? Other than those answered in the email earlier today? If not, Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Caven. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Osrog. Aye. Maladra. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhardt. Aye. Ruby. Ruby, aye. Committee of the whole items of business, folks. We jump to. We got nothing. Actually, is that G or is that 18? I'm not sure if that's a typo. Oh, that's the resolution number 22. So that is F. That's part of F. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, nothing under item 12 as well. Number 13 is new business and public comment. Anyone joining us this evening regarding any matter you'd like to share with the council? And I'll also ask if there's anyone online wishing to speak. No one raising their hand at this time. Thank you, sir. From the dais, new business or anything at all? <clears throat> Folks, we're at the bewitching hour where we will entertain a motion to adjourn the city council meeting. So motion has been made by Kasarog. All in favor of adjourning the council meeting, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The meeting is adjourned. We'll take just a moment to transition to the committee of the whole meeting where Mr. Bruno is chairing. Uh, I'd like to call this uh, committee of the whole meeting to, uh, to order. Uh, it's Monday, March 7th, 2022. Uh, I'm Alderman, uh, Alderperson Mike Bruno. I serve alongside the esteemed Alderperson Burkhardt in the first ward. Um, Let's see, going down the agenda. Uh, item two, recommend suspending the rules to permit Alderman Bruno to be the chairman for this meeting and to vote on. Oh, can you make a note that uh, Alderman Marks is not here? Everyone else is oh, present. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, please note that uh, everyone is uh, in attendance uh, with the exception of uh, Alderperson Marks. Thank you. Um, item two, recommend suspending the rules to permit Alderman Bruno to be chairman for this meeting and to vote on all action items on this agenda. Is there such a motion? So moved. moved by Mayor. Second. Second by Burkhart. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, on to uh, item three, approve committee of the whole minutes for February 22nd, 2022. Is there a motion? Moved so, by Kasserag, seconded by Kilberg. Any discussion, updates? Seeing none, sensing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? 
passes unanimously. Uh, items of business, 4A, consider draft resolution authorizing acceptance of proposal and execution of a contract with Clark Environmental Incorporated to conduct 2022-2023 mosquito abatement program in an annual amount not to exceed $54,640. Do I have a motion? Moved by Burghardt, seconded by Caven. Uh, do we have any? Uh... Sure. So the uh, fiscal year 23 annual budget provided 60,000 within the general fund to conduct mosquito abatement uh, for your consideration and it is an extension of the service contract that was approved in 2015. The proposal includes an offer to extend the contract through fiscal year 24 at the same cost as fiscal year 23. Clark Environmental has been providing the mosquito abatement services for the city since 2014, and staff is confident in their ability and recommends the city exercise the contract extension option through fiscal year 24 pending future city council budget authorization. And we do have Director Babica with us this evening if you have any additional questions. Attorney uh, Alderman Kilberg. This might have been in the documentation, uh, and uh, I, don't, I can't recall. How many... Um, passes or treatments to the uh, did uh, we receive uh, last year as it relates to abatement uh, I get asked that question occasionally I'm guessing it's probably three how close am I there were four adult site applications last season With the exception of the extreme heavy rains we had back in 18 and 19, with that year we had six, it's been consistently at four. As needed, they're not scheduled. Right, that's good. That's my question. Thank you. Uh, Alder Kasserag? Um, I was wondering, did we go out for quotes or um, why did I'm assuming we didn't because there wasn't a matrix in the packet this is a continuation of a contract that was uh, put out to bid in 2014 there were zero competitors in the 2014 bid and as a result we have been continuing the services due to the exceptional service and responsiveness of Clark environmental okay and how much of an increase did we see here that we're talking about exercising for next next fiscal year I can send out that exact number to the city council, but it's about two thousand dollars. Okay. On an annual basis. Those were all my questions. Thank you. And we only pay as they do the work. For the adult site applications, correct. There's a base fee of doing the uh, larvicide applications, where they pre-treat the breeding sites. Um, without going into too much detail, that's the best way to reduce the populations before they bloom thank you thank you any other questions seeing none sensing none uh, all those in favor signified by saying aye aye, aye. any opposed passed unanimously thank you thank you rich uh, item 4b Consider draft resolution authorizing execution of an intergovernmental inter agreement with the County of Kane uh, for household hazardous waste collection services and rider to offer to contract RFP 22-010 with Clean Harbors Environmental Services, Inc. in the annual amount not to exceed $20,000. Do I have a motion? Moved by Swanson. Second by Burkhart. Uh, Stephanie? Okay. So the fiscal year 23 budget provides 20000 within the refuse fund to conduct curbside household hazardous waste program. In August 2017, Geneva and Kane County entered into a five-year intergovernmental agreement to conduct this program utilizing the Kane County contractor. Attached um, for your and in the packet for your review this evening is the IGA with Kane County to continue the program for the years 22 through 27. The program will be administered by Kane County with the household hazardous waste materials collected curbside from the residents as is the current practice. 
And again, since tonight is the Public Works Committee of the Whole meeting, uh, Director Babica is here with us if you have any additional questions. Are there any questions from the dais, from the public? Seeing none, sensing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Item 4C, consider draft ordinance proposing the establishment of special service area number 33 in the city of Geneva, Kane County, Illinois, and providing for a public hearing and procedures in connection therewith for Emma's Landing subdivision. Do I have a motion? Maladra, Mayor, Stephanie? Sure. So per the city code, a special service area is required as a backup financing mechanism to cover the maintenance of the stormwater detention areas associated with the development should the owner or owners not maintain the facilities. This allows the city to collect the funds through the special service area tax to pay the maintenance rather than the general fund. The SSA establishment process requires the passage of the ordinance that you have before you this evening. Uh, then it requires a public hearing, which if approved would be scheduled for April 18th and a final ordinance approving the SSA. And again, Director Babica is with us this evening to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from the dais? And should I, should I be asking uh, you if there's anyone online? No one online okay. this evening. Um, no questions, seeing none, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item 4D, hearing and proceed, oh, consider draft resolution awarding bid and purchase of Radian WECO three-phase meter site analyzer in an amount of $47,135. Do I have a motion? So Mayor? Second. Kasarag? Okay. So the current meter analyzer used in the electric division has reached the end of its useful life and is no longer supported. Request for bids for a replacement was advertised, three bids were received, um, and two were received after the deadline and returned to the bidders unopened. The unit bid from Technology International did not meet our specifications. As such, the recommendation is to award the bid to Annexter Power Solutions as the lowest responsible bidder. Uh, we do have Superintendent Holton with us this evening if you have any additional questions. Any questions from the dais? No one's online. Seeing none, sensing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Item E. Consider draft resolution authorizing execution of a contract for the State Street Bridge Railing Removal and Replacement Project with Bollinger Lock Associates, Associates in an amount not to exceed $143,870. Do we have a motion? So Kasarag? Second. Mayor. Okay, so in December 2021, the city requested engineering proposals for the replacement of the State Street Bridge railings. The RFP included evaluating the various bridge railing products that meet IDOT standards, obtaining IDOT approvals, preparing, designing bid specs, and construction management. Five consultants responded, and staff determined that the consulting team of BLA and Ames Engineering, Inc. would provide the best results. Uh, BLA provided the city with two proposals. The first was bridge railing removal replacement, and the second was a railing removal replacement with a widened sidewalk. More information regarding these options was provided in the packet uh, for your consideration this evening. Uh, the recommendation from staff is the second option as it supports the city's strategic plan, the bike plan, and enhances our ADA access. Uh, staff anticipates the design and permitting work will be spread over fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 23, and the resulting estimate of cost will, will be used for potential construction in fiscal year 24. Uh, we do have the um, Assistant Director of Public Works and our city engineer, Brian Scheiber, with us this evening, as well as two representatives from BLA, uh, Tim and Nils. Tom, sorry, I wrote, I can't even read my own handwriting. Uh, so if there are any additional questions, uh, those are the gentlemen who can answer them for you. Any questions from the dais? Uh, Alder Person Caven. Thank you. Um, well, I'm glad that they're 
getting replaced because I know I've had several people call and I know they're certainly in, in, in need of being replaced. Is there any part that's going to be replaced that is then going to be need to be removed or impacted when they do the widening that comes down towards that intersection or does the part that's being replaced end before that's going to be spread out? Yeah, the East State Street reconstruction project yes. won't you. touch the bridge. It, that project stopped short. Of the okay. Well, I couldn't remember how far the yeah. the railing kept going. Okay, that only question I had. Thank you, uh, Mr. Con or Kilberg. Uh, the, uh, the gentleman there to hear. Uh, uh, do you have any history uh, communities that you've done this for? Obviously, you've had a lot of experience with this type of work. Uh, where Illinois grant money's been involved. Uh, I know that we're pursuing it. Uh, do you have any, uh, any history or anything that you might be able to share in regard to that? Uh, so, uh, can, you, uh, can you come to the dais, please, or to the lectern? <clears throat> Yeah, so if I understand the question Excuse correctly, me. you're asking, sorry? Could you uh, state your name? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is Tom Janicki. I'm a senior structural manager at BLA Incorporated. So. Oh, did you, want, did you hear my question? Yeah, I just want to make sure. I, so you're asking, has our company had experience in kind of looking for sources of funding for no, this type of project? Not you necessarily, but okay. uh, the, the projects that you've obviously done uh, historically, ha has state or federal grant money been involved uh, in, pay in, in paying for your services? Um, so, we, you know, we we do a lot of work for municipalities and local agencies. And just depending on the project, like some of the projects we do are completely locally funded. Uh, some use uh, various um, sources of federal funding. A, a big one is STP Bridge. It's a uh, state transportation um, program you know dash bridge and, th and there's other ones um, in this particular case uh, I think it was um, you know just the RP had kind of stated that this would be a locally funded project um, I think we're pursuing grant money aren't we uh, so we have pursued grant for this and it was not, not accepted um, if we are continuing to look if there might be future funding, I would note that BLA is also our consultant on the East State Street construction project. So that con that project has all kinds of grant right. funding. So I, I, I believe these individuals may not individually have worked on those, but, but BLA has. But anytime we continue to okay. look for money. We don't well, have money yet. that's not your expertise. So we're consulting with other yeah. people within your organization. Yeah, okay, I understand. I don't want yeah, to put my, you on the spot. Yeah, my, uh, you know, my, I guess, uh, level of expertise is actually the details of the bridge design and that kind of thing. Uh, usually, you know. Our, our interest is in paying for it. <laughs> well, I'm also a Geneva resident, so that's an important thing too. So. Good, good. No, I'll, I'll let you off then. Right. Thank you. Yeah, if you have any other questions. Thank you. Anyone else from the dais? Uh, uh, well, tell you what, I think I, I missed uh, Ruby before, and I'll come to you. So Ruby and Kasarag. Thank you. I was just curious. Um, how much say we have as the city of Geneva versus um, versus IDOT? How much input do we do we get in this matter? Well, our input will be on the aesthetic side of things. IDOT is more concerned with the structural integrity of the bridge railing, uh, whether it meets their standards for traffic impacts, um, separations between pedestrians and the traffic, um, and that's why we're seeking a consultant to help us weed out all the various items that are on the market um, we expect them to come to us with several different price point uh, railings that meet IDOT standards and we can pick and choose which ones uh, we're attracted to okay and I was also curious if um, you have any more um, insight about the possibility of lights on the railing that was in the packet like what variables are we considering when we're thinking about whether or not we want the lights is it strictly financial or are there other things we can consider the illuminated railings will be a, a more expensive option um, and we did specifically mention that in our rfp that we were uh, looking into that option um, so we would expect yeah, them to come back to us with a recommendation on that okay yeah i mean that would be beautiful if if it's a possibility 
So, all right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kasserad. I was just curious. There was uh, some designs towards the very end of the packet. Um, were those designs proposals for this bridge, or were that just an example of designs that BLA has done before? There were like circles. Um, I think he's referring. I know to there was something about Highland Park in there too, so I didn't know if it related to the Highland Park project. Are you referring to the highlighted uh, structural drawings? They were, you know, I got right here. The, it's literally the second to last page. Yeah, sure. Decorative railing. Um, yeah, highlighted. I sure, guess so, it is so I can ask that question. So, you know, one of the challenges of, of being an engineering consultant is, you know, everyone wants to know the cost estimate. And then, you know, if you come up with a number, people might say, well, where did you get that number? So the, so the point of that was I found what, what I thought was kind of a middle of the road representative project that just happens to be a project that is in Highland Park. And that actually is not a project that BLA worked on, but, you know, it's representative of many similar projects that we have. So just to kind of give an, a baseline, you know, the per foot cost of railing, is, as Brian was saying, you know, if we're adding some kind of LED lights or something like that, the cost... Really, if you look at the cost of the whole project, the cost to break up the concrete and mobilize, really the cost of the procuring that special railing is, is a great deal of that cost. So in order, and something I wanted to stress, you know, to you guys if I got the opportunity is, you know, the construction costs could, could vary quite a bit. So I put that in there as, as an example for the construction cost. So you kind of know, like, okay, if you look at that and you say, oh, I definitely want something fancier than that, the construction cost could be significantly more. Or if you want something more simple, it could be less. So the point of including that Highland Park project with the circles was just kind of like a, what I thought was a middle-of-the-road representative railing style. Okay, perfect. No, I think that's a great reference. I think that's a great idea. Are you seeing with, um, you know, supply-limited being limited and in virtually every industry now that that's affecting these type of projects too? Yes. Um, and if not so, how so? Universally. And it, it's, sometimes it can be in the, the time to procure the railing and sometimes in cost. So my last company, I worked on the I-74, the Mississippi River Bridge and the Quad Cities, and I know you know, they had the grand opening. They still didn't have the outer pedestrian railings yet because it was taking so long because of supply chain problems. And I know we have seen some lettings in Indiana, and I want to say it was in Illinois too, where the construction costs were, you know, higher. You're, you're seeing maybe a, a shortage of bidders too, which kind of drives the price up high. So there's a possibility of that happening, but that's something that's almost impossible for us to predict. Sure. Um, and we haven't seen it happen necessarily universally, like everything's up 50% or anything like that. But here and there, okay. You know, obviously, if things are produced domestically, it's probably somewhat of a less of an issue and, you know just there's so many factors and variables but it, yeah it's, it's something I don't want to say it's a concern but it's something that's on our minds you know we've seen some some bids have to get retracted because of stuff like that for other agencies so then last question uh, about the aesthetics and the design will we probably end up with three designs to choose from kind of thing or do you guys just kind of pick one and then present that as an option to us or um, how is that going to work in we'll 20, 22, 2023? We'll be seeking several different options to come back for consideration. And will the council see those? I guess that was more my question. Yet to be determined whether that comes to council or if there's going to be some kind of committee or administrative decision on that. I'm not sure how that decision will be made. Okay. I'm pretty excited about this. I think it's a great connection from the east-west side and tying into the East State Street everything so i think it's i'm i'm was really happy to see it in pen in the packet so thank you i appreciate it thank you uh kilberg then mayor yeah a uh, couple points um the uh the flowers on the bridge and the sprinkling system <clears throat> will that be addressed with a more permanent uh, uh approach uh i know that there have been issues as it relates to the sprinkling of those uh, those hanging pots I'm just wondering if that is a part of this uh, or could be incorporated as a part of it uh, so that uh, uh, it's, it's something that doesn't need to be maintained to the extent that it has been in the past. 
I'd say it's probably something we'll be looking into as a part of this. Okay. And then the second point, and I know I've had questions on it, and this is going to be addressed with the East State Street project, is the lampposts and the, the, uh, the bases of those lampposts from really uh, the bridge to uh, Glengarry uh, that are in a, in a, in a state of, of needing some serious repair work. Some are falling apart and, and painting, obviously, something that's been needed and it's been shared with me over the last three or four years. And, and it is, I know, a part of the project, and I just wanted to make that, uh, get that message across to the public that it, uh, it's in our plans and it's not neglect on the part of the city. It's just a case where it's going to be addressed as a part of the East State Street project. So, you are correct. Thank you. Person Mayor. Um, I'm super excited for this project to get done. So um, first of all, I just wanted to say that um, I think that the maintenance over the years after it's finished should be taken into account too, specifically with any lighting that we do, that it's something that our people can change without a lot of problem and doesn't go out very often. Um, the two highlights on each, I think they're on each side or maybe on one side of the bridge, on the dam side, they're taller poles. We've got all the little guys and then two big ones. Is there any way to get rid of those? Get rid of them? Uh, that's something well, we, we can have to have to. high lighting at the bridge. I'm not sure what the illumination requires. Um, yeah, Nils, do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, we do have a we have a sub consultant Ames Engineering that's that's focusing. Could you approach the microphone. Sorry, please? <laughs> sorry about that. Um, we do have a sub consultant Ames Engineering that's focused on the lighting, and they're also they're the sub consultant for the East State Street as well. So yeah, so the same company would be doing the lighting design for both. And when we prepared a couple different scopes, I believe in Ames's, in in the number you're seeing there, that includes scope to replace all of them, right? Yeah, uh, real quick. Nils Jordahl uh, with BLA. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so roadway lighting, yeah, we do have two different styles of, of light pole on the bridge. Uh, the, uh, the, the shorter kind of twin, twin luminaires are, are considered a, you know, a decorative aesthetic sort of lighting. Uh, they also give uh, a, a lot of good lighting for, uh, for pedestrians uh, on both sides, of the, both sides of the structure. The tall poles are the actual uh, roadway lighting, and that's really what IDOT cares the most about. Uh, so, <clears throat> so you know, if if there's if there's a replacement of those, it, it's going to have to match up with the uh, the photometric analysis. You know, to to uh, just purely from a safety standpoint, you know, we can't do anything. We're not going to be able to do anything that's going to uh, you know make the roadway darker or or less safe. Uh, <clears throat> but there there will be options, uh, and that's that's part of what we'll be looking into. Ultimately, uh, all of it will will have to be uh, approved uh, uh, by the state uh, in order to, to be um, you know to, to move forward as an option. So, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the dais? From the public? Nothing. I take it. Uh, seeing none. Sensing none. All those in favor of this item, signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Passed unanimously. That moves us on to uh, item five, public comment and new business. Any public comment from the dais? Uh, uh, I wanted to bring before the committee the whole, um, a couple of projects that are in progress in Geneva that uh, have lingered for a long time. and. Uh, Obviously, one of those being Dunkin' Donut and the other Bash. Now, both of those projects were approved uh, some time ago. I think uh, the Dunkin' Donut probably about three years, Bash coming up on two years. I was wondering if it would be possible for staff to uh, uh, get in touch with uh, those developers and maybe uh, uh, attend a council meeting in the future at their convenience and maybe provide the council with an update. Uh, the other point is, is that obviously we have financial commitments as a city with both of these developers. And, and my question is, uh, 
at, we've made a commitment and now we're probably 3x and 2x past the dates that we were initially giving as, as far as an opening of those businesses. I'm wondering if what what legal recourse do we have as it relates to our, our, our prior financial commitments as it relates to both of those projects? I would, uh, I can, so on the Duncan project, the agreement that the council approved did not have a specific date that they had to be completed by, and but it the, the benchmarks for when payment is made have not yet been met, so no money has been expended. Um, on BASH, I don't know that off the top of my head whether there were any milestone dates in that agreement. But with the other agreement, and, and city attorney can, can opine as well, but if there's no, if they haven't met the, the, the marks, we don't pay, but at the same time, the agreement is still in effect because they are still complying with building and those types of issues. I guess my argument is, is that we've made financial commitments on the part of the city. And if it's open-ended and there's no end to this, we're taking resources that we've committed that we can't commit elsewhere where there might be more pressing or more important projects that come down the road. I'm just saying, I think as a developer, I think they should, and this is a cooperative effort on the part of the city and the developer. I think that the developer should have an obligation to come before the council at some point in time to, uh, to share their progress, what are the holdups, and what's their anticipated opening date. Would, would it be fair to ask? Uh, I mean, I think we can ask. I don't know that we can require their attendance, but we can certainly extend an invitation and suggest that they attend. Could I ask a question? Um, may he? You've got the floor, Mr. Kilberg. If, uh, no, I'll certainly yield. I'm finished. So in what way have we committed anything that if we wanted to do Project B instead of give money to Dunkin' Donuts, we can't? At this point, we've, I mean, we have a commitment with Dunkin' Donuts. There's a, a small grant. The rest was a sales tax rebate. Right, so but nothing, nothing happened. Nothing has been expended. Nothing right. has been, and there's nothing that we've said no to because of these projects. Okay, uh, but I think, so your point then is that grant we're holding on to because if they do something. Do we have commitments with BASH but again, that we've made prohibits no us from doing anything? Well, See, I think that, go ahead. We have committed to meet, uh, city resources though, haven't we? As far as permit review and, and those, is that? No, as far as participating in, in the project. Yeah, and again, I, I was not prepared for this conversation this oh, evening, well, so I, oh, sorry. sorry, but yeah, I mean, my understanding is with BASH, I think the only thing was a waiver of the permit fees, I think might have been, if I recall correctly, um, but other than that, there's been no actual expenditure of funds. So I think that what I'm reacting to is the, is the perception that we are somehow out of pocket for either of these businesses. As I understand it, in both cases, any incentives that we provided, if they don't do business, we don't provide any payment of any sort. Staff time is spent helping prospective applicants as well as any business that's really coming in. That's what their job is. So while I agree with Alderman Kilberg that an understanding of the status of these businesses would be good, I don't see how we are financially hurting in any way from the current state of these oh. businesses there i mean their sales tax is going to be generated from both these businesses at some point in time right sure and the fact that we were under the impression that these were going to be completed projects and that they were going to be doing business and operation a lot sooner they told us a lot sooner than what they they're really uh, performing at i'm just saying tell us when you plan to be in business so that that we can do budgeting I agree. consideration I, right I i'm agree. just saying <laughs> and i think there's a curiosity within the community as to what's happening with those projects i, I agree with all and of i that. think rather than to have each of us as aldermen get asked those questions i think it would be good for the developer to come before the council in the city and tell them where they stand on the project and when they anticipate to, to opening their doors as i said i agree with the 
need to know what they're doing. But I, I disagree with the fact that this, the statement that the city is financially hurting in any way. The thing is, is though we sold it on the pretense so that we're going to get sales tax dollars out of this. Has, have we been off on our sales tax budget estimates in no. all the years we've been on the council, Dean? No, all I'm just saying, though, is, is that there are sales tax dollars that was a pretense for, for these projects. And I'm just saying. You're saying that we're, we're waiting, hurting somebody. We're waiting for the sales tax. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> uh, it sounds like there's not a problem for us asking or no, requesting I, I, that they I, give that's us an my, update. That's my request. I don't know if the rest of the council feels the same way. It would be useful information to have. I believe we all just received an email from uh, uh, Mr. Director DeGroote yes, regarding. Yes, I was the one that requested it. Okay, yes. But I'm just saying, though, submitting another application for a project and that it's, it's sort of open-ended without any timeline, it's really not getting us to a finish so, fair enough. I would I would think that when it becomes a bigger problem is when the next business comes around and says they want that site. That's not happening. So as far as I can tell, like if we take the Duncan site in particular, uh, in terms of looks, that's an improvement to the to that location from what it was. Whether that business opens or not, the current state is better than the former state was. If it doesn't open, we are hurting only if there's another business that wants to go in there. If it doesn't open, we're not out any money out of pocket. We're out whatever time we spent with staff working with that developer. But that happens. They work with potential developers all the time who in the end decide not to locate in Geneva. Um, regarding Bash, I'm kind of thinking the same way, except for I can't say that there's been a big improvement in in the building in fact i think it's kind of gone backwards so it's i'd like to know what's going on there but again until another business comes along and says i want to be in there i i i agree that we should have an update what i disagree with is the idea that somehow we're hurting from any commitments we've made to these businesses or that somehow the city's made a mistake by allowing these businesses. So everything you say about wanting an update, I get. Everything you say beyond that, I don't get. That's all. Well, it doesn't sound like there's a problem making a request. I don't know that they'd want to come before us and be berated for taking too long, but we can make the request. That's Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say I, I agree with Alderman Kilberg. I mean, there is a level of frustration. I think, you know, we all were kind of hurry, hurry, hurry. We were told, you know, we needed to make those decisions very quickly. And years later, those two businesses are still uh, not really moving forward. So I definitely want an update on both. And I'd like to make sure any economic incentives we put out in the future have some kind of uh, ticking clock or something to... Uh, to move the developer along on the project. I, I mean, the flip side, though, is I think about the next person who comes, maybe they'll want to wait three or four years before they start generating any sales tax. But I, I would like to see, you know, some kind of, um, if we can, legally, to say, you know, starts a, on this date or something. And the 10 years doesn't, 10 years from the day they decide to start selling donuts, but 10 years from in 2018, 2019, that we pass that agreement so thank you any other mayor uh. um, so in Duncan's case my understanding is that they'd like to open I think in both cases both developers are interested in opening I think there have been circumstances some some within their control some outside of their control that have hampered their progress but bash is they have permits they are actively working in their building Duncan is, as I understand it, just waiting to get the permit from IDOT. Their plans have been approved. That should be coming forthcoming. But there are certain things that the city itself has no control over. And certainly, I think if you asked either developer, they would say, we would like to be open to. Yeah, so I mean, I'm in construction. This is a really epic, hard time to be in construction and to be trying to open something. So I think the uh, agency that Duncan is having to deal with is probably a little slower than usual and uh, we probably all realize that and don't need to bring them in here to be berated <laughs> because that would be quite a scene um, and bash I mean 
nobody has ever asked me about that. I, I understand that you guys feel that it's a, a problem, but I think that that business has been defunct since Viking Office Supply was there. So the sales tax has been a zero for a gazillion years now. Um, but that's my two cents. All I'll say. Alderperson Ruby, before I recognize you a second. No, time. I don't think we're going to uh, uh, interrogate these developers. I think that I'm just asking for an update and to see their faces. Uh, C Country Village meets, they've been here. Mm -hmm. And, and that project came through the council a lot more recently than the other two. And, they, uh, and they've been very, vis visible, uh, very visible as it relates to the development of their, their business. And uh, I anticipate that that's going to be opening probably within the next two or three months. So uh, no, I, I understand COVID. And I understand that, that there's a lot of reasons why maybe these projects haven't moved along as quickly as possible but at the time that they they brought those projects forward their timeline and what they shared with the council was a lot different than where we're at today and i'm just saying i think we can be reasonable i don't think we're going to to uh, give these people the third degree we want them in the community and I, the sooner the better is what i'm saying and is there anything that we can do to help them get there Alderperson person Ruby uh, do you have anything to uh, alter person Burkhardt again I just want to clarify it was November 2018 when we approved the Duncan agreement so four years <laughs> we were gonna be the first in the country to get the Duncan 20 2020 model so anything else under uh, new business public comment to uh, try to approach the developers and have them uh, attend a, a future committee of the whole meeting at their convenience? Is that what we've agreed to? That's the consensus I hear here. I think that's what I've heard. Yeah. Okay, I, we good. will make the good. request. Okay, great. Thank you. If there's no other comment, we are on to adjournment. Oh, there's nobody online. No. Um, oh. but moved by Swanson. All those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned. <laughs>